Hello and welcome to another Hostinger Academy tutorial. In this video you will learn how you can easily create your online store using WooCommerce. The best part is that you don't need any huge investments or prior knowledge. All you have to do is just follow my steps and your e-commerce website will be ready in no time. So without any further ado, let's jump into creating your online store. Alright, so first things first, for our WooCommerce store we are going to need hosting. And once you land to Hostinger.com, scroll down until you see available plans. I would recommend you to start your online store with a business shared hosting plan. And in the future, if your website will need more resources, you can upgrade to cloud hosting at any time you want. Alright, let's add a business plan to our cart. From here, choose your hosting package. Right here, you will be able to create your account, select the payment method. And as you can see with this hosting plan, we are going to get free SSL certificate, domain name and setup. And before we finish, don't forget to apply coupon code HA10 to get 10% discount off your purchase. From here, the checkout procedure is pretty much the standard one, so I'm gonna move on to the next part of this tutorial. So once you finish the checkout and you log into your Hostinger account, you should see something like this. All right, so let's start by setting up our hosting. Let's click setup. Let's click start now. And as you remember, we got a free domain name. So right here, we can claim our free domain name. Let's click select right here. Enter your desired domain name and click search. I highly recommend you to choose .com because it's the most popular one and the most recognizable for this tutorial. I'm going to use online, but like I said, I highly recommend you to choose .com. Just enter the domain name, click search and let's click continue. Let's select build a new website. Let's choose WooCommerce. Right here you'll have to enter your email address and password. You will use those credentials to log into your WordPress dashboard. So I'm just gonna enter my email address and password. Once you have done this, let's click continue. Here you can choose a template for your WooCommerce store, but I will show you how to create your online store from the scratch. So let's click skip, I don't need a template and just click finish setup. It might take a couple of minutes until the setup is complete. All right, perfect, our website is ready, but before we go and visit our website, let's install SSL certificate. So let's click manage site. As you can see right here, we got this message that our domain name is not registered yet. So before we can install SSL certificate, we have to finish domain registration. So let's click finish domain registration. And right here, you'll have to enter your details like first name, last name, address, city and so on. So just enter all the needed information and once you have finished doing this just click setup. All right from here we can go back to our control panel as you can see the status of our domain name is active. So let's go to hosting. Let's click manage on our website and now we can install SSL certificate. So let's scroll down until you see SSL right here let's select it and right here you will be able to install your ssl certificate so let's click setup and let's click activate and all we have to do is just click install and as you can see the SSL certificate was installed successfully. And if your SSL certificate fails to install, it usually happens because your domain name registration hasn't finished yet. It usually takes about two hours. So wait a little bit of time, let's say about one or two hours and try installing SSL certificate one more time and you shouldn't face any issues anymore. All right, so we successfully installed our SSL certificate and from here we can go ahead and visit our website. All right, as you can see, this is how our website website looks right now and it doesn't look too good because it's just a default website and we have to edit everything ourselves. So the first things which we have to do is we have to log into our WordPress dashboard and to do this you want to go to your URL and at the end of it enter slash WP dash admin and click enter. Right here you will have to enter your credentials which we created previously to log into our WordPress dashboard. You can check remember me and let's click login. So this is how WordPress dashboard looks and if you want to learn more about it, you can check our video WordPress dashboard walkthrough where I'm covering all those uh, settings right here. But for now, let's focus on other things and let's start by installing a theme. So let's go to appearance section and let's click themes. So all right, as you can see, we have one theme enabled and we have some other themes which are inactive. So we have to install a new theme which will be used for our WooCommerce store. So let's click add new and let's use search. You want to look for a theme called Neve. This is the theme which we will be using. So let's click install. 
and let's click activate. All right, so the theme is active and the next thing which we have to do is let's install some plugins. So let's go to plugin section and let's click add new. The first plugin which we will install is called Elementor. So let's use search bar again. All right, this is the plugin which we want to install. So let's click install now and let's click activate. If you want, you can watch this getting started guide, but let's go to plugins and let's install some other plugins. So let's click add new again and let's look for simple social icons. All right, let's click install now and let's click activate. So basically we will use this simple social icons plugin to add our social media profiles to our website and we will use Elementor to create a nice looking page. So basically this plugin is a page builder. So basically plugins I used to add new functionalities to your website and you can have as many plugins as you need. But I must warn you, you shouldn't install too many plugins to your website because your website might start loading very slow. And basically themes are mostly responsible for the design part of your website. So since we have installed our theme, we have added some plugins from here we can move on to adding pages so let's go to pages section and let's click all pages as you can see here we have all available pages so basically we can delete this sample page because we are not going to use it and right here I would recommend you to create important pages for your visitors such as shipping and delivery information returns information terms and conditions contact us page blog page and you could also create such page as FAQ frequently asked questions so to create a new page you have to click add new page right here or you can click add new page here. So let's click add new page. We can close this window and to add a new page just add a title and uh, down here just add the information. So the first page which I'm going to create is going to be shipping and delivery and here just add the information of shipping and delivery. Let your customers know how long shipping and delivery is going to take and include other important information related to shipping or delivery. So once you have added this information you can click publish this page. Let's click publish. Let's click publish and from here we can go back to the list of all our pages. So as you can see I just added a new page shipping and delivery. I didn't include any information in it because I totally understand that your needs might be different from mine. So it's up to you what type of shipping and delivery information you want to include. So the next page which I want to create is going to be a blog page. So to create a new page again let's click right here and this time for a blog page you shouldn't add any information to it. So just add a title. Let's Let's give a title blog and let's click publish. All right, let's go to the list of all our pages. And uh, this blog page is basically going to be used to display our latest blog post. So we don't need to add any information in it. Later on, I will show you how to set this page to display your blog post. All right, so the next page, which is going to be very important is our homepage. So let's create our homepage. Let's click add new page and let's name it home. Again, let's not add any information to this page because we will be editing this page using Elementor. Let's click publish, let's click publish again and let's go to the list of all our pages. So the first two pages blog and home those are the most important pages so far because home page is going to be set as our home page and we are going to set blog page as our page to display blog posts. All right so just like that I'm gonna add some other pages such as frequently asked questions, returns policy, terms and conditions, basically all the pages which I needed for online store. All right as you can see I just finished adding various pages and as you can see I just added the uh, such pages as returns and refunds, terms and conditions and contact us page. Later on I will show you how you can add a contact us form to this page but for now just keep it as it is. Also don't forget to add information to those pages like returns and refunds. Let your customers know what your returns and refunds policies are and all other information which might be important to your customers. All right so since we have finished creating pages we can do some settings to our WordPress website. So let's go to settings section and let's start with the reading section. All right, as you can see in the reading section, we have to change our homepage display settings. So as you can see right now, it's set to show the latest post. We have to change it to a static page. So let's click a static page. Let's select for a homepage, the page which we created previously, and it's going to be called home. And for our blog post, let's select a page which is called blog. Once you have finished doing those changes, don't forget to hit save changes. And while we are in the settings section, we can do one other very important adjustment 
and it's going to be right here in permalink section let's select post name this is going to be very helpful for seo and basically this is how our urls will look instead of showing this difficult to understand url we are going to show our post names so once you have finished doing changes let's scroll down and let's click save changes also if you want to learn more about wordpress settings you can check our other video the most important wordpress settings all right so once we have finished with those changes we can go and visit our website so let's go right here let's click visit our site and as you can see this is how our website looks right now it doesn't look too good because we haven't done any changes at all but we could start by customizing our theme and to do this let's click right here customize and by clicking customize option we will be able to customize this theme all right let's start with header adjustments so our header is going to be right here so to do adjustments to header let's click on the header section and we could start by changing header color let's click right here let's change the color of our header by clicking right here and I'm just gonna add my color. Of course, all the settings related to style are going to be up to you, so you don't really need to follow them, but I just want to show you where those settings are done. And of course, don't be afraid to explore everything yourself. Don't be afraid to check all the customization settings because this way you will learn how to use WordPress even better. All right, so I'm just gonna change the color. All right, so as you can see, this is the color of my header. Of course, it doesn't look too good because I have to do some other adjustments. I'm just gonna change the text color and to change the the color of our menu items or to change the style of the font you will have to go right here and as you can see here we can change the style of our menu so I'm just gonna change the items color and just like that I'm gonna change all other colors I'm gonna change the fonts by going right here all right as you can see it looks much better but I have not finished doing changes to this header so let's go right here and let's add our logo so by clicking this option here we will be able to add our logo and to add our logo let's click right here and I'm just gonna select logo Logo from the file all right I just uploaded my logo and I'm gonna select from the media library all right let's click select and now you will have to crop your image so that's exactly what I'm gonna do once you have finished doing this click crop image and your logo will be uploaded also if you want you can resize this logo by moving this button right here I believe it looks fine and the next thing which we have to add is a site icon so this site icon will be displayed in a tab of your browser so I'm just gonna select my icon and all I have to do is just upload this icon just like I did with a logo. All right, let's click select. And as you can see, this icon will be displayed in the tab of my URL. All right, the next thing which we can add is a shopping cart icon right here. Don't worry about the menu because right now it's displaying all our pages. Later on, we will change that. So to add a shopping cart to our header, let's go back to header settings and we will have to change header preset. Let's click right here and let's choose this preset. All right, as you can see, search icon was added next to our menu and uh, now we can change this icon with our shopping cart. So to do this you want to go right here let's remove a search icon and let's add shopping cart icon all right as you can see shopping cart icon was added successfully if you want right here you can resize the icon size also the next thing which we could do let's go to mobile view and as you can see right here we don't have any shopping cart in our header so to add a shopping cart we can go right here let's use the first part of the header which will be only displayed on a mobile device and in any place you want you can add cart icon all right as you can see cart icon was added successfully we can move it to other space and I think it looks good all right let's go to desktop view all right so basically we have finished with our header later on I will come back to change the main menu because as you can see right now it's displaying all our pages all right so the next thing which we can change is our footer so let's go back to customization settings and let's choose footer so as you can see for footer we have two sections so this is the first section the top part of footer and this is the bottom section of our footer so if you don't want to have a bottom part of your footer you can remove it by clicking right here or if you want you can change the text which is right here by adding your own text but I guess I'm just gonna remove the text right here and I will do some style adjustments I'm just gonna change the color of this footer because later on once we are finished with the footer it's going to look way better with this extra space all right so to change the color of this area we have to go right here let's click settings and in the color section just add your color so I'm just gonna paste my color and as you can see this is how it's going to look all right so we are not finished with the footer I usually like to include very important information for my visitors such as shipping and delivery information contact us page 
returns and refunds policy and all other information which is very important for our users basically here i'm going to include all the pages which we created previously for our customers and we are going to accomplish this by adding widgets to our footer so let's start with the first section right here let's choose this section let's click add and let's select footer one so in this footer one section i'm going to include information for my visitors like shipping and delivery returns and refunds policy terms and conditions and all similar information so to do this you want to go right here let's click add widget let's scroll down until you see pages let's click pages widget and as you can see by default all pages were added to this widget let's give a title to this widget and let's name it information Obviously, we are not going to need all those pages right here. So later on, I will show you how you can exclude those pages. You will have to enter ID of a certain page if you want to exclude it. All right, but before we do that, let's add another widget of pages. Let's click right here and let's select footer two. Let's click add a widget. And just like the previous time, let's select pages. All right, as you can see, again, we have the same list of our pages, but this time let's give a title to this widget help. So in this widget, I'm planning to include such pages as contact us page and fragrantly ask questions. So let's start excluding pages and to exclude pages, don't close this tab. I recommend you to open a new tab and go to your WordPress dashboard. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my WordPress dashboard in a new tab. All right. So once you have opened new tab and you are in your dashboard, you want to go to pages section and let's select all pages. So as you remember in the second widget of pages, I'm planning to include only two pages. So the first page is is going to be contact us and the second page is going to be fragrantly ask questions so obviously i want to exclude all the other pages so to do that i need to find out the id of a certain page so to find out the id of a certain page you want to click edit and i would recommend you to open it in a new tab let's go to that tab and as you can see right here after post equals nine so nine is the id of this page so you want to copy this id or you don't even need to copy it because it's very easy to remember it and let's go back to our customization settings so in the help section we are going to exclude blog page by entering the idea of this page right here and as you can see this page was excluded successfully so just like that i'm going to exclude all the pages which i'm not planning to use an in information widget and in the help widget all right as you can see i just finished excluding all the pages which i'm not planning to use in my pages widget and this is how it looks right now so the next thing which we could add in our footer is our social media profiles so our visitors will Will be able to visit our social media profiles like Facebook, Instagram, and so on. So to add this widget, you want to click again right here. Let's click add. Let's select footer free. Let's click add a widget and let's look for a widget which is right here in the bottom. Yeah, simple social icons. This is the widget which came with our plugin which we installed previously that was called simple social icons. Let's click on it and as you can see, it was added successfully. So right now, all you have to do is just add your social media profiles and and give a title to this widget so that's exactly what I'm gonna do all right I just finished adding my social media profiles and as you can see this is how our footer is going to look actually it doesn't look too good because the alignment is not right so for example we can change the alignment to make it look perfect so let's click on the first widget let's click edit right here let's go to layout settings and let's select that we want vertical alignment and we will have to do the same with every single widget so let's click right here let's go to layout adjust Adjustments. let's select up let's do the same with our social media profiles and let's click right here all right as you can see it looks fine it looks really great and now we can change the color of our footer so to do this you will have to go right here and let's click here settings and as you can see right here we can change the color so that's exactly what I'm gonna do so I just finished changing the colors and this is how our footer is going to look I think it looks pretty good and don't forget those all customization settings are up to you so choose any colors you want but since I'm making an e-commerce store for dog supplies, I believe those colors will fit the best. And all right, once you have finished doing changes with customization settings, don't forget to click publish. And now we can close customization tab. And from here, we can start customizing our homepage. So as you can see, now we have our header, we have our footer and our homepage is pretty much empty. So to start editing our homepage, let's click edit page. 
and let's select edit with Elementor. So basically using Elementor you can create a really great looking pages and by creating new sections and adding various elements to those sections you will be able to create a really great looking homepage. If you want to learn more on how to use Elementor, how to create your homepages using Elementor, you can check out our videos on how to use Elementor because there's quite a lot of things to cover. But for example, let's start by creating a new section. Let's click right here and let's select one column and here we can add various elements to this section. So for example, I'm going to add a background image for this section. So to do this, I will have to click right here. Let's go to style settings and for background, let's select classic and let's add an image. So I'm just going to upload an image which I'm planning to use for a background. All right. So I just uploaded my image. I'm going to select this image and let's click insert image. All right. So this is how it looks right now and we have to do some adjustments. So let's go right here and let's go to advanced section and here we can start doing padding adjustments to make our image bigger. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some padding and margin adjustments. All right. I believe it looks fine. And now we can add some other elements right here. So for example, if I would click on this section, I can add a heading. So all you have to do is just drag and drop elements to a certain section. So I'm just going to add the text. I'm going to do some style adjustments. I'm going to change the color of the text. I'm going to change the size of the text. So yeah, don't be afraid to explore everything yourself because you are learning and and like I said before, if you want to learn more about Elementor, you can check out our videos. So I'm going to do some adjustments to this text. All right. I just finished doing changes. And the next element which we could add is a button underneath this text. So to do this, you want to go right here and look for a button. So just drag it right here underneath this text. And just like that, you added a button. So again, just change the URL of this button, add your own link. You can change the color and style section. You can do all various adjustments for style just like you can do to any other element. So I'm going to do some changes to this button. All right, I believe it looks great. And just like that, I'm going to add some more sections. I'm going to add some other elements. And from here, I'm going to move on to other section of this tutorial. All right, I just finished doing changes to my homepage. And as you can see, this is how it's going to look. So once you have finished with your homepage, don't forget to click update. And from here, we can click right here and we can check how our homepage is going to look. Let's click view page. And yeah, this is how our homepage is going to look. As you can see, it looks quite nice. It's a very simple looking homepage. And like I said, if you want to to learn more about Elementor, don't forget to check out some of the, our videos. All right. So from here, we can go to our WordPress dashboard and we can start checking out our WooCommerce settings. So basically WooCommerce is just a plugin. It adds functionalities of e-commerce to our WordPress website. So obviously WooCommerce section is this one. Also with WooCommerce product section comes together and analytics section. Oh, as well, marketing section goes together with WooCommerce. So those four sections are meant for WooCommerce. WooCommerce. So I'm just going to walk you through each section. So for example, in the home section of WooCommerce, basically you can access home of WooCommerce. I don't use this section very often. Basically right here, WooCommerce publishes various updates, which you can find in the home section. In order section, here you will see all the orders. So basically all the orders will be added to the list. Once you click on a certain order, you will be able to check who placed that order and what type of item he ordered, the address and all other information related to orders. So basically all the orders will be added to the list, which you can access right here and customer section. Basically here you will see another list of your customers. You can check how much money a certain customer has spent. You can even check if this customer has placed multiple orders on your store or he just purchased from your store only once and basically all other similar information related to your customers. Coupon section is for creating coupons like discount codes, uh, promotional codes and all similar things. So to create a coupon just click add coupon right here you can choose what type of coupon it's going to be if it's going to be fixed card discount percentage discount or fixed product discount so for example if i would choose percentage discount and let's say if i would add here like 25 that means my customers would get 25 percent discount of their order if they would use that code so here you will have to enter your amount here you will have to enter that coupon code and if your coupon has expired date you can add this date right here here 
here you'll find some other restrictions, some usage limitations. So once you have added all the needed information, don't forget to click publish. And this coupon code will be added to the list, which you will be able to access in this coupons section. And as you can see, once I clicked on coupons right here, the WooCommerce took me to marketing section. So basically some of those sections right here from WooCommerce can be found in those other sections. So let's go back and let's go to report section. As you can see right here, you will see various reports, various informations, how many orders you have received, how much money you have made and all other similar information. Like you can check the last seven days, this month, last month, year and so on. In a moment, I will go back to settings section because there's quite a lot of things to talk about it. All right, in status section, basically you can check the status of your WooCommerce store if everything's fine, if you don't have any errors and so on. So this section is again up to you. You can do some other adjustments. You can check various other information right here. All right, in extension section, you can add various WooCommerce extensions. Uh, they are official WooCommerce extensions. Usually they cost quite a lot of money and uh, I rarely use them myself. I usually use third party plugins for adding various functionalities to my WooCommerce website. All right, in product section, I will show you how to add products. So for now, we don't need to focus right here. And in analytics section, you will see all information related to your WooCommerce store, like for example, how many sales you got compared to previous period and so on. So here you will be able to access various data, which you can use to determine if your e-commerce store is performing well or bad. So basically this is where you can access various analytics information. Don't be afraid to check everything yourself, explore everything yourself. This way you will understand WooCommerce even better not just WordPress, but WooCommerce as well. All right, so from here, as I mentioned you before, let's go back to WooCommerce settings section. Let's click on the settings and in general tab, add your store address, add your location, add your selling location. Right here, you can enable taxes. If you would enable taxes, that means taxes will be calculated according to your business location, to your store address. So yeah, don't forget to add your information. Taxes information is completely up to you because I'm not sure where you are from and taxes depending on your location might be different to mine as well here you can change the currency you can change the position of currency and do other adjustments so the only setting which i'm planning to do right now is just gonna i'm just gonna change the currency from pound sterling to us dollars and once you have finished doing changes once you have added your address and if you decided to enable taxes once you have selected your currency don't forget to click save changes all right from here we can move on to product section Right here, we should create another page. So shop page, as you can see in the list, we don't have this page. So let's go ahead to pages section right here and let's click add new page. Just create a blank page shop. Let's click publish. Let's go back. Let's go to WooCommerce settings and let's click products and let's select the page which we just created shop. Basically this page is going to be used to display all your products, no matter which category your product is. Uh, basically all the products will be displayed on this shop page right here. You can change the measurements and you can do all other similar adjustments. So those all settings are up to you, but I highly recommend you to create another page, name it shop. And basically here you will be able to access all your products. So basically you can use the shop page to display all your products to your customers so yeah this is quite important so we can click save changes you can also do some other adjustments in inventory section but i usually don't change anything right here all right let's go to shipping section and here you can create shipping zones let's create a shipping zone with two shipping methods let's create a flat rate shipping method and let's create a free shipping method so let's click add shipping zone and as you can see here you can add a name of the zone you can choose a region so for example we can create a shipping zone where shipping Shipping to United States, to America is going to cost $10. And uh, basically, if a customer is from United States, he will be able to choose a flat rate and the price of the shipping is going to be $10. So I'm just going to enter zone name and I'm going to select zone regions. All right, so I just added zone name, US. I selected zone region and it's going to be United States. And now all I have to do is just add shipping method. All right, so as you can see right here, we have three different shipping methods. It's up to you which shipping methods you want to use, but I'm going to show you how you can create flat rate or how you can create a free shipping method. So for example, let's choose flat rate and let's click add shipping method. Now we have to do some changes to this shipping method. You can change the title of this method. So instead of calling it flat rate, we could change it to standard shipping. And as you can see, I just changed the title of this method and now it's going to be a standard shipping and it's going to cost $10. It's not taxable and we can click save changes. So once I added this shipping method, this shipping zone, it's only applied to the customers who are from United 
United States. So basically they have only one shipping method, which is standard shipping and it's going to cost $10. Just like that for United States, you could add another flat rate shipping method. So for example, maybe you could add another shipping method, which would be express shipping and uh, you would charge even more. So for example, express shipping would cost $20 to United States. So all you have to do is just click add shipping method. Again, you would have to select flat rate and the only changes you would have to do is just change the title to express shipping and add the cost, which would be like $20 or something like that. And if you want to add a free shipping, just select it from the drop down menu. And this way your customers will be able to choose a free shipping method. It's almost the same as adding a flat rate. But for now, let's leave this one shipping method to United States and let's click to shipping methods right here. Let's click leave. And as you can see here, we have only one shipping zone. So that means we can only ship products to United States since we have only this zone and we only have a standard shipping for the zone. But for example, we could add another shipping zone by clicking right here and we could add such shipping as worldwide. So if you would offer worldwide shipping, this time you would have to add only name for this zone and you don't need to select any regions. This way, the shipping method will be applied to worldwide. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add the name to the zone and now we can add shipping method. All right, so again, it's up to you which shipping method you would like to apply. But for example, we could add flat rate and let's click add shipping method. And now we can do some changes to it. Let's click edit. Let's change the shipping method title and let's add the cost of the shipping. All right, so as you can see, I just finished adding the information. I just added standard shipping, which is going to be applied for customers around the globe and it's going to cost $18. So let's click save changes and just like that I added another shipping zone which is applied for customers around the globe all right let's go to shipping zones again let's click leave and as you can see right here we have two shipping zones we have United States and we have everywhere so basically if a customer is from United States he will get a $10 shipping method which we created for United States and all other customers will get a worldwide shipping standard fee which is going to be $18 so it's up to you if you want to create more shipping zones or you are going to offer only standard shipping method for worldwide customers and uh, it's up to you if you want to charge flat rates or if you are planning to offer a free shipping method all right so from here we can move on to payment section so let's start by enabling paypal method so let's click enable and let's click setup all you have to do is just add your paypal email right here and here just add your paypal email and once you have done this just click save changes this way you will be able to accept payments by paypal and to be able to accept payments by credit cards or debit cards you will need to install another plugin so let's go ahead and do that let's go to plugin section and let's click add new you want to look for a plugin called stripe woocommerce all right so this is the plugin which we will be using let's click install now and let's click activate all right from here we can go back to woocommerce let's go to settings let's go back to payments and as you can see right here we have more payment methods so we are going to use stripe payment method let's click activate let's click setup and before you add any information right here you will need to create an account at stripe.com just fill up all the needed information add your bank account and this way you will be able to accept payments by cards all right so from here let's go to stripe account and i will show you which codes you have to add to your stripe settings all right once you have created your stripe account and you are in your dashboard right here in developer section and api keys you will find two keys so this is the publishable key you want to copy this key and you want to copy this secret key right here so basically you want to copy those two keys and from here let's go back to our wordpress dashboard all right so we are in the stripe settings and first of all you want to disable test mode let's click disable and right here you will have to publish those two keys so as you remember we had live publishable key paste it right here and paste your live secret key once you have finished doing those changes click save changes and this way you will be able to accept payments by cards all right so from here we can move on to account and privacy basically this section is completely 
completely up to you. It's all related to your customers, to account creation. If your customers can only place orders once they have an account on your store, but I usually don't do any changes right here because most of the time everything's good by default. All right, let's go in email section. And basically those are all notification emails which our customers will receive. So as you can see, we have new order email, we have failed order email, canceled order and so on. If you want, you can do some adjustments to those emails, but I usually don't change anything right here. And if you want, you can change the color of the email. As you can see, the base color is this purple color and this is a gray color. And you can also add a header image, just paste the URL of your logo, for example. And you can even preview this email template by clicking right here. This is right now the default email template. If we wouldn't do any changes, this is how our email notifications would look. So yeah, those style settings are completely up to you. All right, let's go back to our dashboard. And once you have finished doing any changes, don't forget to click save changes. All right, let's go to integration section. Basically, this section is for more experienced users. Once you are starting out, you might not need this uh, section anytime soon. I have used this integration section only once, I believe, and actually it wasn't even necessary. All right, so from here we can go to advanced section and here we will have to create some pages. So as you can see right now, we don't have any pages for cart page, for checkout page, for my account page. We have this page for terms and conditions because we created it previously. So let's select this page. And uh, right now you should create all those other pages. So just create cart page, checkout page, my account page, and uh, that's it. So to create those pages, as you probably remember, you want to go right here, all pages. Let's click leave and just create blank pages. So let's click add new and let's start by creating a cart page. So I'm just going to give a title. Let's click publish. Let's go back to the list of our pages. All right. So as you can see, I just created cart page and just like that, I'm going to create two other pages. I will create checkout page and my account page. All right. I just finished creating my pages and now we can go back to WooCommerce section. Let's click settings one more time and let's go to advanced settings. All right. So let's select cart page. I just created this cart page right here. Let's select checkout page and let's select my account page and let's select terms and conditions page, which can be found right here. And we can enable for secure checkout. Let's click right here. Let's scroll down and basically that's it. Don't forget to click save changes. All right, let's go back to our homepage and I want to show you one thing. Let's go right here. Let's click visit site and let's scroll down to our footer. As you can see in the footer, we have more pages than we had previously because we created some new pages. As you can see, we have cart page, checkout page, we have my account page and we have shop page. So you will have to exclude those pages just like we did previously. To exclude those pages, you want to go right here. Let's select footer. Let's select footer one. Let's click on pages widget. And as you remember right here, by entering the ID of a certain page, you will be able to exclude that page. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to exclude all the pages, which I'm not planning to use in those widgets. I just finished excluding pages. And as you can see, everything is back to normal. Let's click publish. And now we can close customizations tab. And from here we can start adding products. So let's go to our dashboard. Let's go to product section. And before we add our first products, first of all, we should create categories for our products. So let's click categories. And since on my e-commerce store, I'm planning to sell dog supplies. I'm going to have such categories as beds, leashes, toys, and grooming products. So as you can see right here, we have one category, which is called uncategorized. The bad thing is we cannot delete this category, but the good thing is we can add Edit this category. We can click right here, quick edit, and all you have to do is just change the name and the slug of this category to the category which you are planning to use. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. And let's click update category. And right here, I can add new categories. So all I have to do is just add the name, the slug, and uh, I can select if this category is going to be a child category. So for example, if I would select beds category, I could add another category which would be under this main category beds. So for example, in beds category, category. Maybe I could add such category as mat or something like that. But in this case, I'm not going to add any child categories. I'm just going to add some main categories. So I'm just going to add the name and the slug. The name and the slug of your category should be the same. So once you have added this information, click add new category. And just like that, I'm going to add the rest of categories. 
All right, as you can see, I just finished adding my categories and from here we can start adding our products. So to add a new product, you can click right here, add new. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to add two types of products. So the first type of product is going to be a single product. So for example, if I have a dog supply store, I could add a single product, which would be some kind of toy. And that means this product doesn't have any other variations of this product like size or color. And I will show you how to add variable products. Products. Those products have different variations. So for example, it could have size, it could have color. So maybe you are selling t-shirts. So obviously you will have different colors, different sizes. So variable type of products are used for products that have variations. All right, let's go back to product section. And as you can see, this is where you can add your product. So the most important fields are your product name. So basically the title of your product, you should add description for your product. This description is going to be displayed on your product page here you will have to select the category as you remember previously we created those categories uh, tags are not so very important I usually don't add tags myself and I'm doing just fine all right so here you don't need to do any adjustments right here you will have to add a product image and you can add some other images of your product by adding product gallery also if you want you can add a short description which is going to be displayed above the price and add to cart button but I usually don't add short descriptions as well all right so I'm just gonna add some of the information I'm just gonna add product name description and I'm gonna add images all right I just finished adding the information as you can see I added a new product which is going to be a dog toy and as you can see it has a title and it has a short description I have selected that this is going to be toys category I just added a product image so this image is going to be displayed as the main image of this product if you have more images of a certain product you can add uh, right here by selecting add product gallery images all right so once you have added this information you have added your title your description description you have selected category and you have your main image of your product here we will have to do some other adjustments since we are adding a simple product that means it's going to be a single product we are not adding variable product so let's add some more information for this simple product right here in general section you will have to add your price so just add a regular price if this item is not on a sale but if an item is on the sale you should include a sale price right here so I'm just gonna add the regular price and sale price so all right as you can see a regular price is going to be $45 and since this item is going to be on a sale it's going to cost $22 all right from here we can go to inventory section here you can create SKUs for your products this way if you have a lot of products you can track your stock but um, this information is basically for users who are tracking all their sales who have their own stock and so on if your store is on a big scale uh, this information might be important but usually you can find all the information in analytics section to see how many sales you made and so on but I still recommend you to add your SKU so for example this is going to be the first product so I'm gonna add that this is going to be my first product if you are planning to manage stock you can enable it right here and you can add how many items you have and so on so for example maybe I have 10 units of this product this is where I should add this information so I'm just gonna add 10 and as you can see right here low stock threshold so for example once you only have two items in the stock you will be notified by email notification that you are running out of stock so again it's up to you if you want to track your inventory and from here we can move on to shipping section right here if you are planning to create some other classes for your shipping methods of course it's a little bit more complicated there's quite a lot of things to talk about shipping methods and shipping classes but I usually offer flat rates or free shipping methods so I don't do any adjustments right here in the shipping section so from here we can move on to link products and this is quite important if you have more products similar to this type of product you can add them right here since I don't have any more products added I will not be able to choose any other products but for example if you have some other similar products in which your potential customers might be interested you can add them right here by typing the title of that product and this product is going to be displayed in the checkout page this way you can do upsells you can sell more products so this is quite useful and you should add the same products or you could add different products in cross sell section in this case those 
those products will be displayed on your product page, on your main product page. So if you would choose any other products, those products would be only displayed for this particular product. All right, from here, we can go to attribute section and here you can add various attributes for your product. So by going right here, as you can see, you can add custom product attributes. So let's click add. And for example, a custom product attribute could be material of this item. So what is the material of this dog toy? So I'm just gonna add the name and I'm gonna add the value. So as you can see, just like that, I can add even more attributes. So for example, maybe this dog toy is a recommended for adult dogs. So let's click add another attribute and I'm gonna add another attribute that this uh, particular dog toy is a recommended for adult dogs. All right, once you have finished adding attributes, you can click save attributes. From here, we can go to advanced section and here if you need, if you want, you can add purchase note, which will be included in email notification for your customer. I usually don't add any purchase notes and as you can see you can do some other adjustments like disable reviews but again I don't do any changes right here In get more options basically here you can add some WooCommerce extensions like I mentioned you before those extensions are quite expensive all right so everything seems great we have our title we have our description we have selected our category we have the main product image and we have finished adding the all information right here so once you have finished doing that we can click publish and we can change check out how this product is going to look. We can click right here, view product. All right, and as you can see, this is how our product is going to look. It has the title, description, price, we can add it to cart. We have additional information. So the additional information are the attributes which we added previously. Our customers will be able to leave a review. And from here, we can go ahead and add a variable product. So let's go to dashboard, let's go to products and let's select add new product. All right, so just like the previous time, I'm just gonna add product name, description. I'm gonna select a category and I'm gonna add the main image. All right, as you can see, I just finished adding the information. This is the title, description, I selected category. And as you can see, I added my product image as well. I added some other images in my product gallery. All right, so this time, instead of choosing simple product, let's choose variable product. All right, so right here again, it's up to you if you want to manage stock, if you want to include SKU. So this information is up to you. Shipping information is going to be the same. Uh, link products, already talked about that. This is where you can upsell other products. So for example, now I have added one product and I can upsell this product right here. So I added a dog toy, so I'm gonna look for a toy. So as you can see, this is the dog toy which I can upsell. Let's add it right here and let's add the same toy right here in cross sell. All right, so I just added upsells and cross sells and later on you will see where this product is going to be displayed. All right, let's go to attribute section. So this time in attribute section, we will include main attributes which will be used for our variations. So such main attributes can be size and color. So I'm planning to have different sizes beds and I'm planning to have the same beds of different colors. So all right, let's click add new. Let's give a name, let's enter size and let's enter values separated by this symbol. All right, so I just finished adding values. As you can see, I'm going to have small, medium and large options. This time let's select used for variations and we can hide this attribute from our product page. Let's click save attributes. All right, let's click expand. And as you can see, I just added this attribute right here. The next attribute which I could add is color. So let's click add. Let's give a name to this attribute and I'm gonna add the values just like I did with my size values. And again, let's select that this is going to be used for variations and let's hide this attribute from product page. All right, let's click save attributes. And we could also add another attribute which we wouldn't use for our variations, just like we did with a simple product. So let's click add attribute. And this time I'm gonna add attribute material. I will let my customers know from what material this bed is made. And this time don't choose that this attribute is going to be used for variations. And let's leave that this is going to be a visible on product page. Let's click save attributes. And now let's go to variations. All right, let's go right here and let's select create variations from all attributes. Let's click on it and let's click go. Let's click OK. And as you can see, nine variations were added. All right, so as you can see, we have nine variations right now. So we have small black bed, we have small purple bed, we have small brown bed, we have medium and so on. So now we have to add prices. We can also add images for those variations. So let's click expand all. And as you can see right here, if you are planning to track your sales, 
files if you need SKUs this is where you can enter them and uh, here you just enter a regular price and if this item is on a sale you can enter sale price as well so just like that I'm gonna enter a regular price and the sale price for all my products for all my variations all right as you can see I just finished adding the price so as you can see I have regular price and I have sale price so it used to cost $22 now it costs $13 and this is for a small black bed the same goes for all other small beds and we have different price for medium beds so regular price was $42 now it's going to cost $25 the next thing which we can do is set images for those variations so for small black I'm gonna use this image black let's click set variation and for small purple I'm gonna use this image purple and I'm gonna do the same with small brown I'm gonna use brown image and once we are in the medium section I'm gonna use the same images I'm just gonna use medium black and I'm gonna do the same with medium purple and just like that I'm gonna set images for my variations all right once you have finished adding information images prices and so on let's click save changes all right so those are all variations and since now we are finished with this product we can click publish all right let's click view product and as you can see we have different sizes for example if i would choose small size and i would choose purple color as you can see purple version will be displayed automatically if i would choose brown brown version would be displayed so just like that you can add variable products all right so the next thing which we can change is our menu because right now it's very messy and it doesn't look good at all so to change this menu let's go right here to the dashboard let's go to appearance section and let's click menus let's give a title to this menu and let's select that this is going to be primary menu let's click create menu and now it's up to you what you want to display in your menu so obviously we could display our homepage, we could display our categories and we could include blog so let's start by adding homepage and a blog let's click view all and let's look for a blog and let's click home let's click add to menu all right and now we could add our categories to this menu but to add categories first of all we need to know the urls of our categories so let's go to products let's go to categories and let's open category section in new tab let's click open in new tab and as you can see this is all the categories which we have right now we can even see that we have one product in beds category and we have one product in toys category so to find out the url of your category simply click view but I would recommend you to open in the new tab and this is the URL of our category so basically we can copy this URL and now we can go back to menu and let's select custom links so let's paste this URL right here and just give a title so this is going to be beds so let's name it beds let's click add to menu and just like that I'm gonna add all the other categories all right so as you can see by using custom links option I just added all categories to my menu and if you want to swap places with a certain element you can move it anywhere you want and uh, yeah basically this is it this is how you can easily create menus once you have finished doing changes to your menu don't forget to click save menu and from here we can go back to our homepage. let's click visit site and as you can see now everything looks much better so if I would go to bed section this is my bed section and as you can see right here we have this sidebar in our category we can hide the sidebar to do this you want to go to customize section let's choose layout adjustments let's click content sidebar and let's choose this option this way you will hide the sidebar of your pages categories and blog posts so let's click publish and let's close customization tab. all right so as you can see it's still here but we can click right here and let's click purge all and this sidebar is gone so let's click on our product as you can see if I would choose the size let's choose a small size and let's choose a purple bed and let's click add to cart as you can see this bed was added successfully to my shopping cart now I can click view cart and as you can see our cart page is empty don't worry about that this can happen of course it doesn't necessarily mean that this will happen to you as well but I will show you a quick fix to this problem so let's click edit this page and all you have to do is just add a short code 
which you can see right here. If this problem happened with our shopping cart, most likely we are going to have the same issue with our checkout page and my account page. So for all those pages, we will have to include codes. All right, once you have added this code, click update and let's click preview. Let's select desktop and let's click preview in the new tab. All right, as you can see, everything's fine right now. And now we will have to add codes for checkout page and my account page. So let's go to our WordPress dashboard. Let's go to pages. Let's click all pages and let's look for checkout page. Let's click edit and I will paste the code. I will include all those codes in description so you will not need to write them yourself. So once you have added a code, just click update. Let's go to the list of all our pages and let's look for my account page. All right, let's click edit. And again, let's paste the code and let's click update. All right, let's go to the list of all our pages one more time. And uh, the last thing which we could do with our pages, as you remember, previously we created a contact us page. So we could include a contact us form to this page. Let's click edit and let's select edit with Elementor. All right, let's click that we want to add a new section. Let's select two columns. And in the first column, we could include our contact details, for example, email address, phone number, or your physical address if you want. So let's go right here. We could add a heading right here. And underneath this heading, we could include a paragraph of text where we would display our email address, our phone number, or our physical address as well. So let's go to the elements and let's add text editor. So I'm just gonna add some text. I'm gonna add my email address, my phone number. And from here, we will add a contact us form. All right, as you can see, I just added my contact details. Before we add contact us form, we can do some adjustments to this section. Let's go right here and let's move it down by going right here. I believe it looks good. And now we can include a contact us form in this second column. So to add a contact us form, let's go right here and let's select WordPress forms. Let's drag it right here. Let's click new form. Let's select simple contact form and let's click save. Now we can close this window. And as you can see, we just included contact us form. So our visitors will be able to contact us using this form. Once a visitor submits a message, you will receive it to your email address, which you use to log into your WordPress dashboard. So basically you will receive a message to your admin email address. All right, so once you have finished doing changes, let's click update, let's go back, let's click view page. And as you can see, this is how our contact us page is going to look. All right, but before we finish, let's check our blog page and let's see if everything is all right all right everything seems fine as you can see we have one blog post uh, which was created by default so if you want to add blog posts to your website you can do this by going right here to the dashboard section and right here in post section you will be able to add a new blog post i highly recommend you to add blog posts to your e-commerce store because this way you will bring organic traffic to your website i do it myself and if you want to learn how to add blog posts you can check our video adding your first blog post and and basically this is it. This is how you can easily create your own online store using WooCommerce. As you saw it yourself, it wasn't difficult after all. But don't forget, creating a website is just the beginning and the whole fun part starts now. Feel free to visit our SEO for Beginners playlist to start increasing your website's influence on the web. And if you learned something new today, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and as always, good luck in your online journey.